Greetings everyone, Zed here. With the release of patch 4.6, we have a slew of new collectible things to acquire. So in this video, I'm going to give you a complete rundown of all the collectibles so you can get your grubby little hands on as many things as possible. Anyone who knows me knows my biggest passion in Genshin is collecting as much as I possibly can, and I want to pass that knowledge on to you. Before we proceed, I do want to mention that since this is a collection video, that in our community discord I regularly do collection alerts for any new collectible items that appear in the game, no matter how big Big or how small. So if you want to get pinged on Discord when something shiny shows up, be sure to join the Discord in the link in the description of this video. And after accepting to follow the rules, go to the Roll Assign channel and click on the Touch Grass emoji to gain the collector role and be notified by me personally when any new collectibles appear. I also have a Twitter as well that I've been completely inactive on, but I'm going to start using it for collection alerts as well starting now. So feel free to join that as well. Link again in the description of this video. Lastly, I will have a spreadsheet in the description of this video that itemizes every single thing I'm talking about in this video, so be sure to check that out. And with that, let's get started. For 4.6, I'm just going to lump characters and weapons together since we only have one of each this time around. For characters, we have our one and only Father, a 5-star polearm pyro DPS who is currently gracing us in the first half of the 4.6 banners, and with her addition, brings us to a total of 80 collectible characters. By the time this video drops, you should still have a week left to collect her, so if you want to get your hands on her, now is the time. The new weapon addition is her 5-star specialty polearm, the Crimson Moon Semblance which is featured on the weapon banner, also in the first phase of 4.6. The addition of this weapon brings us to a whopping 182 unique collectible weapons total. Outside of Father and her weapon, there are no new characters or weapons to be collected this patch. Moving on to Exploration, 4.6 has brought us an entire new region of Fontaine and a bustling and thriving new region of Sumeru. Wait, what? What do you mean the new addition of Sumeru is practically empty and... In all seriousness, the actual addition to Sumeru is mostly vacant, and hopefully for now is just a placeholder in order to keep the world map more visually cohesive. As for the two new regions to explore in Fontaine, these include the Noistoi region and the fully underwater area called the Sea of Bygone Eras. If you want to fully explore the two new regions, you'll want to get 100% on the world map for both of them by collecting chests, Oculus, and also interacting with various doodads and exploration points on the map. Speaking of Oculus, the new Fontaine regions contain 55 new Hydroculus that can be collected. If you've collected every Hydroculus in Fontaine up to this point since the release of Fontaine in patch 4.0, you should now finally be able to max the Fontaine Statue of the Seven to level 10, and as with every other region so far, have one additional Oculus left over as a keepsake. As for chests, the new regions have a total of 151 chest to open, and this count is reflected in your achievement section for the new area entitled Ancient Sea Treasure Hunter. On top of this, the new area in Sumeru, as empty as it is, also has three chests that can be collected, and these chest counts are reflected in an achievement released in a previous patch entitled Treasure Hunter of the Shimmering Woods. The addition of these three chests brings a total count of the achievement to 575 chests. Don't forget too that by opening all of these chests, you are also collecting Hydro Sigils, and we now have enough Sigils to fully unlock the final levels of the Fountain of Lucene to level 50. Any extra Sigils can also now be spent in the City of Fontaine by talking to the Jeweler there. An interesting side note for the first region ever, we're actually able to spend leftover Hydro Sigils on Weapon Ascension materials, as opposed to every other region which only allows us to spend leftover Sigils on Mora. Pretty neat. The new regions of Fontaine brings us four new world quests to complete. As with every patch with new map areas to explore, we always get one main throughline world quest that ties the entire region together, and in this case that quest is the Canticles of Harmony. With the addition of these four world quests, the world quest counter in Fontaine is now capped at 45 total world quests for the region. Please note, none of the other regions have had their world quests altered or added to in any way this patch, so they remain the same. 4.6 brings us 36 new achievements achievements spread out amongst three different achievement categories. As with every new explorable region, we get a new category of achievements dedicated to the exploration of the new area, and in this case that category is Rhapsodia in the Ancient Sea. And with it we have 13 new achievements. I won't go over each achievement in detail, but if you want to fully explore the two new regions of Fontaine, you will collect most if not all of these achievements. Light up the entire map, collect all the waypoints, collect all the chests, and then finish the Canticles of 
Harmony World Quest mentioned earlier, and you'll be golden. There is also an achievement when you collect and play all six movements for the Auto Harmonic Music Box, an item you obtain in your exploration of the new area. So you'll want to complete that as well, as not only do you obtain the achievement, but some side rewards as well. Another new category of achievements is Challenger Series 9, which brings us six new achievements. You collect these by meeting specific combat criteria during various boss fights, which include the two new fights we got in 4.6, the Legatus Golem and the Arlecchino Trounce Domain. The final category is the usual World of Wonders achievements we get almost every patch. There are 19 new achievements here, and I won't go into detail for each one as they are a bit all over the place, but I will say if you complete all world quests and fully explore the new area to its absolute fullest, you'll be well on your way to completing most of them. For a full list, you can consult the spreadsheet I have linked in the description of this video as needed. With the addition of these 38 new achievements, the total number of achievements that you can now obtain is 1,226. Before I get into the one new recipe in 4.6, I want to make an amendment on my last video about version 4.5. In the last video, I mentioned that it was possible we may see one new recipe called Mega Meaty Sushi, since it was released as a promo recipe outside of the global version of the game. Usually when Hoyo does this, it means in the global version of the game we might see the recipe sent to everyone else via in-game mail. We did in fact not receive this recipe, and as of now, it is unlikely we ever will. With that out of the way, 4.6 brings us one new recipe to collect called Boule Souffle. You can buy this recipe from Arouette in Fontaine. The addition of this recipe brings the total collectible recipes in the game to 191. This includes the 9 you start the game with, 160 collectible recipes, and 22 event exclusive recipes that are permanently missable. TCG brings us 26 new cards in 4.6, with the break down being four new character cards, their eight respective talent cards, and 14 new action cards. As is usual with the collectible character cards, you will have to buy two match invitation letters to challenge and obtain Farzan and Kuki Shinobu. The other two collectible character cards are enemy cards, which are obtained through tavern card challenges for the Emperor of Fire and Iron and the Abyss Herald Wicked Torrents. The respective talent cards are obtained automatically when you obtain the respective character. Just don't forget you can also get the talent card skins from achieving proficiency level 10 independently with each character. All of the other action cards can be bought from Prince's Shop in the Cat's Tail. If you're also curious about how many total cards there are to collect, you can always ask Prince to see your player level, and he will gladly display it for you there. Remember that these are individual cards, so duplicates are counted. If you're also interested in collecting skins for every card, every new card has a skin, and all skins can be purchased through Prince's Shop as well. Note that currently it's not possible to buy out the entire shop just yet, but if you've been diligent in collecting every coin you can since the TTG went live, that goal is slowly becoming more of a reality with each new patch released. Don't forget to do your Senite Gauntlet challenges every week for 6,000 coins, and also during this patch there is the Forge Realms Temper Challenge, which can net you 8,000 extra coins. Points. Patch 4.6 brings us five new name cards to collect. Anytime there is a new playable character, they get a name card for reaching friendship level 10. Since this patch brings us Arlecchino as a playable character, it's no surprise she's getting a friendship name card as well. As mentioned before, we're finally able to max the Fountain of Lucene and Fontaine using Hydra Sigils, which nets us a new name card at level 48. Two of the name cards are for completing achievement categories, once for fully exploring the new regions of Fontaine, Rhapsodia in the Ancient Sea, and one for fully completing the boss challengers, Challenger Series 9. We covered these previously in the achievement section. The last name card is the non-free-to-play friendly card we get each patch from spending real money on the Gnostic Chorus version of the Battle Pass. With these additions, there are now 194 collectible name cards current as of this patch. Gift sets are often overlooked in Genshin, but every new character gets released two new gift sets to complete in the Serena Teapot, and Arlecchino is no different. If you place Arlecchino in your Teapot with the indoor set Perfectly Drawn Focus and the outdoor set Court of Justice's Placid Days, you will check these gift sets off your list and gain some small rewards for completing each set. Since each collectible character has 
has two gift sets and there are 80 collectible characters, there are obviously 160 total gift sets. It's quite a feat to check off all of them because you have to own every character, so this is definitely not free to play friendly. Spin crystals are generally released alongside new explorable regions, so it's no shock the two new regions have five spin crystals scattered amongst their landscapes. The addition of these spin crystals brings our collectible total to 130. You can always check your total spin crystal count in an achievement in game and look over your collection in the Serenity Pot. This is a new category I'm going to cover since they added a ton of new collectible avatars to the game this patch. Before patch 4.6, we had 98 total collectible avatars, 79 for each collectible character, plus 2 for both versions of the Traveler, and 17 for each collectible skin. With the addition of 1 for Arlecchino and the new type of avatars, 17 for specific world quest completions, we are now at a total of 116 collectible avatars. Note though that you can only actually obtain 115 total since you can't have both forms of the Traveler on the same account. As mentioned in the achievement section, every new patch that has a new explorable region generally has a world quest that is a main throughline quest for those areas. These avatars are generally tied to those types of world quests. If you have previously completed those world quests in previous patches, don't fret, you will automatically obtain those avatars so there's nothing to worry about there. On to our final section, the archive. This one's a little on the long side and is kind of daunting with 45 new entries, so I'm not going to go into great detail detail about each individual new entry, but I am just going to quickly show them on screen while listing the categories to keep it brief. The entry categories are as follows. One new weapon entry, four new artifact entries, three new enemy entries, 15 new tutorial entries, nine new geography entries, four new story quest entries, three new book entries, two new food entries, seven new trophy entries, and one new utility item entry. Yeah, that was a lot. Most of the archive is free to play friendly, except for the weapon collection section and the food collection section, as that requires a full roster of heroes to complete. If you can manage to have a full archive with every entry, the highest achievable entry count is 2,514. Note that the actual entry count is technically 2,516, but there are five mini Sealy entries in the utility item section that no player can collect more than three of. All right, this is my complete rundown of the collectible items in patch 4.6. If I find any errors after posting this video or something gets released, new additions, things like that, I will make sure to notate them down below in the pinned comment. So please check the pinned comment to make sure there is not any errata. I will also have a full spreadsheet of all of these new collectible items down below in the description of this video. Don't also forget to check our community Discord if you have any questions about any of the information here or need help finding specific collectibles in your quest. Don't forget too, I do collection alerts both on Discord and on Twitter, so join us there. We would love to have you. As an aside, I also personally enjoy seeing other people's specific accomplishments in the Discord as well. So come show off, we would love to have you. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you wanna stay in the know. I do a collection video like this every single patch. See you in 4.7 and happy hunting.